Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan. Here's yet another tutorial on creating your very own first Java Chess engine. This tutorial we're going to focus on rating our movability. That is how flexible we are to make, uh, you know, to run away, to retreat, all those things are good. If you're, uh, you don't want to be in a closed system you want to have, or a, a closed position, you want to be open and free to move around. It's generally a good idea. Of course, the most extreme is a, a, a checkmate or stalemate where you have no moves to make. Um, even checks are often extremely restricted in that uh, there's usually only, you know, four or five exit strategies, sometimes only one in, uh, um, in some uh, forced uh, checks. All right. So... For rating the movability, we first have to think what uh, parameters do we need to include in this? What does it need to know for rating the movability? Well, for one, it needs to know uh, how many moves are possible. And that would be the int list length. And of course, list always refers to the list of moves in my engine. That's why I always have list. That's what it means. Now we also need an int uh, depth um, so that looking further down can be more severe than looking uh, right away for instance uh, and that applies for checkmates you know is checkmate uh, one move away uh, more worrisome than a checkmate four moves away or whatever it is um, so there's a, um, a value for that uh, let's see what else we need um, and then int material. And I do hope that uh, whatever uh, I program in this uh, rating thing especially, that you will modify. I will later be providing more accurate and better rating uh, techniques, but this is just a brief overview and I really hope that you will tweak and improve upon these methods just as I have done. This is not necessarily my best way of, uh, my best techniques but uh, they are a very simple techniques and I think uh, they will give you a, a good understanding of the basics of what you need to look for and uh, what's a good idea to do and not to do. So in our movability, we need to send it these things. So movability, we need to send it the list length is one of those things. So we'll send it, that would be under list. It's already been turned to a length, if you recall. Um, in our alpha beta, it's already list.length that it sends to rating. So, um, also send it the depth was the second one, and the third one was the material. So always make sure that uh, material has been calculated before you call movability. So there's a, a bit of a order that's required. And then I will copy this whole thing here and paste it there. Alright. Now we look uh, error free, I believe. Let's focus in on this movability thing. So we will uh, for starters, be somewhat the same as always. We start out with an int counter equals zero. No surprise there. And then we say counter plus equals list length. So right away we're just saying there's a benefit for being more flexible in your position. All right. And then uh, that is, so basically five points. Because remember, the length is always, you know, there's if there's one move possible, it'll return 5. If there's two moves possible, the length will be 10, because each move requires, uh, you know, 5 characters to represent that move in our uh, notation. And so we're basically saying there's 5 points for every move. So if there were 20 possible positions that I could move one of my pieces to, then that would be the same worth as a pawn, because 20 times 5 would be 100. So uh, that's basically uh, the scale that I have given that counter. 
And now we need to check. This will also check for stalemates and uh, so on. So I'll just put in a little comment here. Uh, five points per valid move. And you can uh, multiply or divide this by certain numbers to, uh, to adjust that if you'd like. So it's not five, it could be six or four or something if you like. Now, let's see. We'll say if list length equals zero, this means checkmate if there's no moves, but it could also mean stalemate. So we have to, uh, let's put in that comment. Current side is in checkmate or stalemate. Now let's put in an if statement. How do we know the difference between the two? Well, the answer is, is the king in check? If you remember, checkmate says, ah, the king is stuck and can't move, uh, and he is being threatened. But stalemate means that the king just can't move, but he's actually not being, uh, he's, a check wasn't called. And that's why stalemate doesn't contain the word check, like check and checkmate do. All right, so, the way we do this is, how do you know if the king is in check? Well, that's the king safe method. So if it's not king safe, then that would be if uh, checkmate. The king is not safe. And otherwise would be if stalemate. All right, so if checkmate, what, how, much, how many points do we attribute to that? Well, the answer is counter. Um, this time we will do, well, we'll leave it a plus equals, but make sure you put in a negative or do a minus equals and a positive. Whatever you do, make sure this is a bad thing, not adding like we've been always adding for material and stuff, make sure this is a, a negative thing. And I pick one, two million, so that's two with six zeros. Or, uh, no, I do 200, sorry. Um, I believe, yes, I believe it worked well with 200,000. And then I times that by the depth, so that can obviously dramatically increase or decrease it. And then, how much is stalemate? It's still stalemate is end game, so that's still a very bad thing. But a computer should prefer to make checkmate over stalemate. That's always checkmate is always a better ending than stalemate is. Especially if it would have been easy to checkmate, but instead chose stalemate, that's uh that's a poor play. Even though you maybe won the game. Alright. So I change it to 150,000 instead of 200,000 in the depth and return that. So you now have rating movability and it tries to avoid checkmate. It tries to get you into checkmate. Until next time, enjoy Java.